like we even wherever we are we can be followers of life or we can be followers of death our bodies will inevitably perish but our essence that is something that can always remain authentic i've heard a lot of people say older people say well you know i'm old and this and that and it's like yeah but you you know you're in there what you know the life force that is animating that body you are still in there Welcome back to this series on the Tao Te Ching, where we're going over each meditation of Taoism's most important text. So like always, if you're new here, I recommend going to my channel, where I have all the videos in a playlist, up to date, and in order for you to watch. So without further delay, reading from the Jia Fu Feng and Jain English translation of the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. Here is chapter 76. We are born gentle and weak, but at death are stiff and hard. Green plants are tender and filled with sap. At their death they are withered and dry. Therefore, the stiff and unbending is the disciple of death. The gentle and yielding is the disciple of life. Thus, an army without flexibility never wins a battle. A tree that is unbending is easily broken. The hard and strong will fall. The soft and weak will overcome. So in the first part here, we are born gentle and weak, but at death are stiff and hard. Green plants are tender and filled with sap. At their death, they are withered and dry. So here in this chapter, we are talking about gentleness and stiffness. Two, you know, we have a yin and yang thing going on. We can already see that. So the things in this universe that we humans can perceive, we can see, we can touch them, they come in many, many forms. One could say that they are in a spectrum from soft and gentle to very hard and stiff. As we've talked about the yin and yang, so to speak, of life and death, here we are furthering that by giving them attributes in talking about gentleness and stiffness. To put this very simply, when we come into existence, when we are born, we're very soft, we're very mushy. It's what babies are like. We haven't developed, we're cartilage, we haven't developed bones yet, we're weak. We can't really do much. We have to be taken care of. You could also think of a small tree sprout, like when a tree is first growing and it's soft, it's green. It's not hard like bark yet. It's very soft. Or you could even think of the earth before it's solidified in that it was a big fiery substance that was malleable, you know? And then in the later stages of development, so to speak with humans, yes, we develop bone, we become harder, even as we get older, we become more stiff. It's a little bit more difficult to move. We become stiffer and harder. The tree, which was a gentle little sprout, becomes hardened and, and old. And even the example of the earth, the fiery earth, it solidifies and becomes this solid thing, this solid ball with this hardened crust. Understanding this is vital, not just because it's like, oh, when you're young, you're, you're soft and gentle. When you're old, you're stiff and hard. Yeah, I mean, understanding that's great, but these are attributes to life and death itself. So when it comes to the physical, right, we cannot help becoming old, okay? We cannot live forever. We cannot force ourselves to remain mushy like a baby and not become stiff. That just happens. We, we Our bones get stiff, our joints get stiff, our mind begins to run slower, like we become, we become hardened. We can't really do anything about that. The same thing as a tree sprout, it can't stop itself from becoming a big, hard bark tree. But our souls, our essence, that is a different story. Because our souls, like we've talked about in this book, and I've talked about in many videos, we can become like a newborn babe. We can become like an uncarved block. We can become a, a born again Christian. We can become a revert in Islam. Do you understand there's a common theme in spirituality when you go back to being like a baby. But physically speaking, no matter what age you are, you're not gonna physically become mushy like a baby again. But when you're mushy and you know, you're know you soft and gentle like a baby, yes, physically speaking, you are embodying the essence of life. That is the prime attribute of life. It is fresh, it is new. And yes, as you are closer to the other end of life, which is death, you become hardened. However, it doesn't mean that your essence 
and your and your how you conduct yourself has to also become hardened. This chapter shows us that like we even wherever we are, we can be followers of life or we can be followers of death. Our bodies will inevitably perish, but our essence, that is something that can always remain authentic. To further this in the next part here, therefore the stiff and unbending is the disciple of death, the gentle and yielding is the disciple of life. Like I just mentioned, these are attributes of life and death, which can be followed independently of where we are in our physical state. I like to use the story of Ebenezer Scrooge from A Christmas Carol by uh, Charles Dickens to put to briefly talk about it. You know, he this at the beginning of the story, he's this old man. He's extremely greedy. He's grumpy. He's lonely. He lives alone. He's extremely like resentful. That's why people say oh you're being a scrooge and he has a lot of money he's just this greedy old man very closed off to the world and we could say he was a disciple of death in this sense and at the end of the story to not give away the entire story but towards the end of the story he becomes grateful he becomes very full of life he becomes gentle and kind nothing changed with him physically he's still an old man like he <laughs> you know what i mean but he became a follower of life he suddenly had this internal realization which changed his external life right he became very giving he became joyous he had this new lease on life he became like a newborn babe like lao tzu would say here a disciple of life now this is really just an incredible way to look at our inner essence because a lot of people feel that they're very locked into their physical condition i've heard a lot of people say older people say well you know i'm old and this and that and it's like yeah but you you know you're in there what you know the life force that is animating that body you are still in there so it begs the question and this goes for anyone right no matter where you are in life are we being hardened are we disciples of death you know or can we maybe do a little something internally become disciples of life become a little bit more gentle thus an army without flexibility never wins a battle a tree that is unbending is easily broken the hard and strong will fall the soft and weak will overcome now this is really cool because so far in this chapter we've been talking about like life in general and our quality of life and the internal but Lao Tzu takes this a step further and he's talking about he brings this back to warfare he's talking about attaining a victory this whole thing of being stiff versus gentle even applies to war so when we've covered in uh, recent chapters about warfare we talked about traditionally speaking people consider a good army and a proper victory of warfare being very yang oriented being very hardened being anger and passionate and just forcing your way through but we talked about hey actually <laughs> the yin side of warfare can be actually a lot more effective and this is what is being the same sentiment is being told here that an army that is hard-headed and can't see past the surface level of we have more people and we have better equipment and will not win over the army that is completely adaptable and flexible go read the art of war and so being close-minded being stiff leads us to death but not only death but defeat this then brings us back to the to a basic fact right and i love this in this chapter that if a tree is hardened and stiff and dried up yes it can't bend it's gonna break <laughs> i love that this chapter highlights that it's just such a clear example because a lot of people well hardened and actually the hardened tree can actually break i love to use the example of the palm tree because a palm tree for those who don't know palm trees are very you see them in places that are along the coast that are in a little bit more warm places but you see them in places where hurricanes happen like in florida or something but you ever notice that they usually are very stable during hurricanes they don't get knocked over why is that well they're created so flexible so on a normal day you go to a pine tree and it's hardened it's, it's it's a hard tree you're like wow this is a stable tree you can't imagine it bending right but it's so hard but it adapts the way that it's built okay i'm not an expert on it but when the hurricane comes along it literally has the ability to swing and sway in every direction literally 
It can literally touch the ground. That's how flexible a palm tree is. But after the storm is over, it goes right back. Isn't that really magnificent? You know, especially with this whole thing of stiffness and flexibility. Nature really is the greatest teacher. With that, stiffness is a fall waiting to happen. It is a break waiting to happen and softness will overcome. And to bring this back to water, you know, need I say more, right? Water, gentle water is so adaptable, nourishing everything it touches. It can be a gentle river, which can erode a mountain, but it can also be a brutal, brutal tsunami.